we sell to their warehouses and we have 45 days to fulfill an order. So long story short, I buy everything in reaction to demand, not in anticipation of demand. I'm John. And I'm Mark. And we are yeah, John Crazy Stock. This is Andrew Turnlin with Turnlin Products. This is Dan Kaplan of the Game Steward. And you're listening to. And you're listening to. And you're listening to the, the Ecom Show. Show. I love it. Welcome to the Ecom Show, presented by Blue Tusker, the number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts, where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Mass. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ecom Show. I'm your host, Andrew Math, and today I have a very special guest. I have Andrew Trenlund of Trenlund Products. Andrew, y'all set? You ready for a good show? I'm ready to go. Let's go. Beautiful. So, of course, I've obviously, you and I chatted a little bit prior to the show. Um, I've done as, as much digging into your business as I can, and I got to be honest, I'm so excited for this episode because I have no idea how you do this. This is amazing. Sure. So this is going to be great. So let's let's start a uh, real high level. Obviously, let's do the, the the traditional pretend no one knows who you are and and yep. tell us a little bit about Churnland Products and we'll and we'll go from there. Okay. Sure. So I'm Andrew Churnland. I've got a company, Churnland Products. Um, it's built out of or its basis was a 83 year old manufacturer of HVAC parts. Um, and basically, long story short, we started selling on Amazon. I did it through a separate company early on, but then we started uh, selling some of those products. We really kind of grown in the industrial space. And we grow not only through first through Seller Central and eBay kind of in the, in the mid 2010s, but then we started selling directly to Amazon. And so now we're the largest vendor in the industrial electrical space with about 300,000 different products. And so we basically use Amazon to scale. And now we're trying to expand uh, even further, not only in the Amazon ecosystem by offering services to other sellers like 3PL services, but also using Amazon as a springboard to grow in other retail, whether it's a Home Depot or a Granger or something like that. So it is damn near impossible for a seller to come on the show and tell me that they have 300,000 products without me asking them like, how do you manage that? I, so we're, I mean, yeah. we work with people who have like 10 and lose right. their minds. So how are you doing that? Well, we're a wholesaler. And I think what the main thing that people um, don't, don't understand about Amazon uh, when you're, when, as far as, uh, as far as their goals, remember they're trying to take over the world. They have a thousand year plan to take over the world essentially. Right. And mm -hmm. so the main thing that they need to do that with is they want to always grow revenue. They want to grow marketing spend. So that's why you see Amazon advertising being so, you know, emphasized in their reports and things like that. And then they want to grow selection because selection drives all those things. And so when we sell directly to Amazon, the beautiful thing is we sell to their warehouses and we have 45 days to fulfill an order. So long story short, I buy everything in reaction to demand, not in anticipation of demand. And so I can as, offer as many products as I can possibly put into their catalog. And when they order for me, as long as I can get it within six weeks, I'm good to go. And so we built a business where essentially we make Amazon happy and we make ourselves happy by just adding products. We've, we've, we've simplified our business model where if we add 10,000 new products every week, we will make more money. And that's uh, what we try to execute on. That is amazing. So... Obviously, that's a ton of research into these different product lines. How do you decipher like which product or which entire sure. line to go into next? Well, we there's many different ways of doing that. We've got certain lines that where they contact us or we're specifically excited about. Maybe even a vendor manager within Amazon says, hey, I really want to add this product line. It's something that's been, you know, uh, there's a huge selection gap. Our competitors all have it, but they won't sell directly to us. Can you acquire it? Um, either directly or indirectly, and then start offer, offering in the catalog so we have that gap filled. They can't, Amazon can't not have some of the best selling products. Um, yeah. And so we've done that in a bunch of different areas. But generally speaking, uh, what we try to do is we try to find brands that are underrepresented. They don't sell directly to Amazon, even if they have a lot of sales on Amazon. And we just 
get their catalog one way or the other and upload it. So we'll upload thousands of products at a time. Now, I'll be honest, Amazon is not buying and stocking on a weekly basis all 300,000 products. Yeah. Um, that's just not the case, especially in our category where we have a lot of oddball industrial products that may, Amazon maybe sells half a dozen of a year. But mm -hmm. you, you know, my, my, my thesis has always been it's easier to sell 100 products once a day than one product 100 times a day. And so what we try to do is just continue adding product because even if we you know, uh, um, uh, have relatively meager sales, if you times it by a thousand and then every once in a while you fall into a real winner, you basically uh, allow yourself to get to, you know, major, major, major scale very, very quickly. That's genius. So what made you get into this product line? Like out of all of the different product lines, like what made you kind of stick to this one and, and obviously scale that? Well, I think there's two things. So one, I have dumb luck. I come from a family that's an industrial electrical background, so I can't take any credit for that. Um, and so <laughs> it wasn't a foreign intimidating um, area to me. I think a lot of people, um, well, and this kind of get, gets into why we were able to scale up a lot of people stick with what they know, right? And that makes a lot of sense. So if you have a interest in scuba diving, you should maybe look at scuba diving products. It's, you know, not really popular. And a lot of people don't know scuba diving. So you might have a really good opportunity to come up with a scuba diving knife or an oddball snorkel or something like that, that yeah. you could sell um, and actually have a certain level of expertise. Um, I happen to be in a kind of an HVAC industrial uh, background. So I started going to that space. But what's great is one, Amazon is, wanting to grow uh in that area they're not nearly as powerful as they are in electronics or toys in the industrial yeah. space and then two it's basically run by a bunch of people that are really scared of amazon they're not used to selling retail and so the thing that we do the real value if i want to i mean I'm, I'm a glorified middleman but if i want to put that in a more charitable way what i do is i bridge the gap from products that sell really well but never have sold retail and allow them to sell retail so if you sell cement mixers and you're the fourth largest cement mixing manufacturer in the United States, there's a, probably a lot of sales of contractors that want to buy cement mixers on Amazon and they're thousands of dollars a piece. So there's a lot of revenue there. That guy who owns a cement mixing company just doesn't know how to play the Amazon game. And we bridge that gap by being the liaison who understands the challenges and difficulties and needs of the cement mixer guy and the challenges and difficulties and need Amazon needs and we make that happen genius so of course I'm um, I gotta I put my marketing hat on and now I have like so many questions so are you advertising for all these products or are you just putting them up on Amazon and just kind of benefiting from the existing traffic <laughs> kind of both what we've found so we have we've sold we spent millions of dollars in advertising we have an a cost of about four percent lifetime and so it's really, really good. Yeah. What, what we found though is the main driver of these sales is not a or not marketing uh, to a certain extent because a lot of the things, so let's say I sell replacement motors. The way people shop for replacement motors is they look at the old motor they have, look at the mm -hmm. model number on there and they search manufacturer model number. So to show up for that organically is very, very easy when you sell that manufacturer and model number. Now, if I was selling yeah. generic replacements, there's a little more difficulty to it. But when in those kind of places, be it besides that very, very, very specified search, there's not a lot of people looking for it as a general replacement the way they are looking for a coffee maker or something like mm -hmm. that. They're not shopping, they're buying. And so that's kind of the big difference. So the one thing we have done from an advertising standpoint is one, we try to win in certain categories where there is very, very small, you know, multi, maybe maybe two or three niche players and we try to win that space. But for the most part, um, I guess marketing isn't the key driver to our sales because as much as I've tried to spend, I end up playing one or two cents a click anyway. And so, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not that I can throw money at it to, to, to solve or to drive more revenue. Okay. I totally understand. So then from, from off Amazon, cause I know you have a website are all the same products, uh, that you have on Amazon also on your website. No, no, because, um, we, when we sell stuff, say on our website or we sell through our, our various websites, mm -hmm. now we're the buyer record. So when we sell directly to Amazon, Amazon is, the, I'm sorry, seller of record. Um, Amazon is the seller of record. It's up to them to, to, to stock, get, get it to the customer on time, deal with customer service. Yeah. Because we have offloaded the actual selling function, 
online to Amazon, we don't have to deal with any of that stuff. And it, it frees us up for things that we actually do stock or where we are the seller of record. That's where we have a much smaller catalog. I mean, literally like one, one thousandth smaller because all yeah. of a sudden we have to write customer service. We have to deal mm -hmm. with a bunch more, um, much, much more of the difficulties. And so we're not able to scale that the same way as when we're able to outsource the selling. I mean, basically as the middleman, we outsource the production and supply to our suppliers and we outsource the selling to Amazon. And so there's nothing for us to do, but just make sure that, you know, when we, when Amazon wants six, we get six and we ship six. And mm -hmm. so that's where our, you know, three PL services come in. Really, we've come, come to be really good at that, that little bridge in the middle. And we offer a little bit of expertise, but being that bridge in the middle is where we're really good. And when we start selling through our other websites, that's where we take a little more traditional e-commerce approach. Marketing is important. Discovery is important. All that good stuff. Yeah. So, I, okay. So th let's, that's a good segue actually into, so it's, um, uh, turn lens services is your, is the three PL side of things. Correct. So I, I can yeah. safely assume based on your sheer product size alone that you are a complete guru at operations. So what, what is, so what is, tell me a little bit about turn lens services and, and that whole approach that you have. So turn lens services is basically, um, we have a lot of customers or there's a lot of inquiries we have where people want to completely outsource the Amazon experience. So they're an industrial manufacturer, mm -hmm. let's say, and they just say, hey, if you can buy and resell it and just be another customer, we, we don't have to change any part of our business. I love that. So just pay us wholesale and I can never have to worry about this again. And we know we're doing really well on Amazon because you know what you're doing, you're doing it at scale. There's other people that say, listen, we could use a lot of help on Amazon. We don't really need consulting. We've got marketing, we've got an e-commerce team, but we just don't know how to pick, pack and ship for Amazon. Our Amazon seller account has a 67% positive rating because we're used to doing these major wholesale orders and not doing onesie twosie orders here and there with you know all these returns because of open box returns. It's just not our cup of tea. That's where Trillin Services can come in and basically we can be your pick, pack and ship arm specifically to e-commerce and specifically to Amazon. So we know, obviously know how to do FBA shipments. We can sell through vendor central. We know all that. And I think the, you know, unlike other three PLs, the two things that are different is one, um, we have kind of a different or three things, really. We have a different pricing structure that grows with you. You're the more you do with us, the cheaper it is, but it's, it's automatic. So you don't have to like choose when to make a certain jump. Yeah. Um, two, we are really, really, really good at Amazon. And so no matter how you sell on Amazon, let's say Vendor Central, um, if you're a big corporation, uh, there's not a lot of 3PLs that know how to do that right. We know how to do that right. And then third, we're really good at big and oversized stuff. So I, I sell thousands and thousands. Probably this week I've sent in 2,000 air conditioners to Amazon. Um, so when it comes to like major stuff, refrigerators, giant art pieces that are, you know, bigger than my wingspan, all that kind of stuff. We are really good at that. Where a lot of 3PLs, they want to sell, they want to ship pairs of socks, keychains, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that those, those three areas, if you're that kind of, uh, uh, if you have that kind of product, which aren't a lot of places, but if we're that kind of product, we are like a perfect match for you. So, so <laughs> I love that you have like this massive product line. And so you started a second business where you can take over other people's product lines. Like it's the, the amount of products that must go through your businesses is gotta be half a million. I would assume well, well, we, at least, we, I mean, we get many truckloads a day. I got six truckloads coming tomorrow. Um, we ship by the train car load. And so it's one of those things, actually, again, when we sell directly to Amazon, one of their costs is inbound fulfillment because they pay the shipping mm -hmm. costs for that, right? Well, yeah. when I can sneak in one cell phone case cover on a train car load, the cost to ship that into their system rather than be, you know, than being 25 cents, a you know, when it comes by a UPS uh, shipment, it's now, you know, 0. 0.0001 cent because it's just this, you know, it cost them only $1,100 to get there and it took up, you know, one, one, one ten thousandth of the space. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a really, really, you know, attractive uh, a thing. So getting to a certain scale, the scale that we've gotten to, it's opened up a lot of different opportunities for us where we can help the brands that we work with, you know, either directly or indirectly. So you personally, how are you managing all of this? Like wh where do you kind of split your time between all over the place? I am running just around like wherever you're needed. People. I've only got <laughs> two people on my team that actually deal with Amazon stuff. So one guy basically gets new products and mm. one person just puts out fires constantly for me. 
Um, I end up doing a lot of that too, but I've got, yeah. so I've got the, the fire woman and I've got the upload guy. And then I've got basically 12, 13 people who all they do all day long is pick, pack and ship. Mm -hmm. And so there's a logistics team. And so it is really operations heavy. And then my main goal is basically to get access to new lines. So my, my ideal goal rather than operating the business is to actually continue getting new access to new lines. But when I'm not doing that, it's just taking care of whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm on the forklift sometimes I'm, you know, other times we're figuring out how to get new racking in or get a new forklift or something like that. Other times I'm working with brands to add other stuff. Like one of the new things I'm going to be selling online shortly is uh, bags of rock salt for your driveway or sidewalk. Now it's one of these things that on Amazon should not work. It's a thing that costs $2 to make and it weighs 40 pounds. Logistically, yeah. e-commerce, it should not work, but we are going to make it work and it's going to be awesome. And we have the model in place, not only with our logistics, but Amazon's logistics, where we will be able to dominate that space in a unique way, where all of a sudden you'll be able to buy rock salt delivered to your door. That's just as cheap if you were to pick it up at the gas station or at the grocery store. And we're going to be able to make all that work so that sales are going to go bananas. That's insane. I mean, that that's obviously a very common issue, right? Like you think of these stuff that's so inexpensive, but so heavy. How, like the fact that you figure that out, I'm sure that's going to be incredibly lucrative. Congratulations. That's awesome. And that's, and that's where that, that's the other part. So, I mean, I guess besides getting new lines, it's, it's figuring out the model of how we can make some of these things work that where there's a giant opportunity. Like for a while we were selling the cheapest hand sanitizer spray on Amazon. It was, I think it was like, $2.99 prime delivered, not an add-on item. So you could get it and have that be the only thing in your cart and it would still be $2.99 with free shipping. And so there's things that we can do where all of a sudden it, it, it you know, so we're the cheapest one on there. It didn't sell as well as I'd like it to. I mean, it's thousands of units, but I mean, we weren't making a ton on it, but um, the long story short is we're trying, I'm trying to figure out ways that we can take advantage of Amazon's rules and their, and, and, and their goals and mm -hmm. meld them in a way where we can grow in new categories that otherwise, you know, uh, um, the opportunity hasn't been, hasn't been <laughs> exercised yet. So I know that, so you, uh, started your first like importing business that you said when you were like 19, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you come up with this idea? Like where, how did it like from, from back then to now, like what was that? that whole trail of like how you figured this stuff out. Cause I know sellers who have been doing this for years and have no idea how to do any right. of this stuff. So well, how, what was that timeline? Like, I think my advantage or disadvantage. Um, so I never sell anything that like needs any kind of marketing panache or actually needs a champion because I'm just, I'm totally dispassionate about the products and apathetic to them. Um, but I am very analytical. I'm an INTJ. And so I just psychopathically just try to figure out what, factors are in play and how I can mush them together. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, when I started importing, the first thing I sold, and I sold this business a while ago was ping pong paddles, no moving parts. It's a piece of wood with a little bit of foam and some rubber. And so basically I could buy them in China for 83 cents a piece, bring them into the U S a few thousand at a time. It would landed costs would be like a dollar 50. And basically I knew that is what was great is I could, I could commit to thousands out of the gate, brand new product I'd never seen because I knew the way Amazon and eBay was set up. If I could sell them for $5.99 with free shipping, this is back when first class was like $2.89. I could sell it for $5.99 free shipping and make money and I could blow everybody out of the water. So if I really needed to, if I just, if it was a disaster and I couldn't brand it as cool or awesome, I could always just dump them and still make money. Now I tried to sell the panels for like $40 a piece and we were very successful doing that. So it was awesome margins. But basically I knew in that time period, people were still not regularly importing from China. I mean, I, Alibaba was fairly undiscovered. Um, mm -hmm. E-commerce wasn't as dominant there. You, um, and then one of the key things in that specific case was I needed, I want, I found a product where brand is important. Just like, um, like, like let me put, let me put it this way. If you're a serious golfer, you don't buy non-branded golf clubs. You want a Titleist. You want a Callaway. You need to have those. If you're going to buy a shovel, no one cares. No one even could name what brand their shovel is. I needed something in the middle where I could come in as a new brand and sound cool and different, where brand was important, where I could get value off of quote-unquote creating a brand, but also 
I wasn't locked out because I wasn't a, you know, there wasn't a moat around, you know, these existing brands that are the key ones. And so mm -hmm. ping pong paddles with Stiga and Butterfly, they had those ones for the hardcore people, but most people there are just playing in their college dorms like me. They didn't care if it had a cool name, like, let's do it. And so we came up with these stupid, sexy titles and model numbers. And that's, and, and that's what we went with. And so I think, I think what, what I try to do and what I would encourage a lot of people to do is really take a analytical approach to what they're doing. I mean, it helps to like know your market and helps you analyze better. So if you want to do scuba diving, like I mentioned before, because that's a passion of yours, like do that. It will help you sift through products on Alibaba a lot better. But at the end of the day, you have to go with the, you know, clear eyes and say, all right, this is how this works. And if it's not there, the only times I've gotten in trouble is when I've tried to think that I'm smart enough to sell something where the math doesn't make sense. And I could just do it through sheer enthusiasm. And that's not something I've been successful with. Hmm. I noticed you also, so you mentioned Alibaba, you mentioned eBay. Obviously we talked about Amazon and your website. What other marketplaces are you selling on? Um, so we sell through some of the kind of uh, because it's, we sell a lot of industrial products, we sell through like Granger, Home Depot, mm -hmm. uh, Northern Tool. These are all kind of like um, contractor slash um, home places. Um, I what I've what, what I've what I've done, which is unfortunately or fortunately, just I guess kind of different, is we only sell basically Amazon in the U.S. A lot of our electrical stuff. There's different voltages in the Eastern Hemisphere. So we're immediately doesn't make sense for us. And so we not only sell just pretty much in the U S but we pretty much only sell on Amazon. I can only, we can only have, have go so many different ways besides some of our own, say kind of like Shopify sites our standalone sites that get traffic outside of e-commerce. We've really mm -hmm. focused on selling on Amazon and even primarily through vendor, although we sell millions through seller central as well, but we really try to focus on that because what we've, what we've, what I've tried to do is I've tried to simplify the business as I mentioned, so that we have one goal, add new products. And if I can execute on that, we will grow. If you try to be all things to all people, add new products, add new marketplaces, become an expert in those, work on advertising, work on product development, work on branding, or, you know, all of a sudden now you have to be a, an expert in eight different things. And that's yeah. really hard. You take a really, really special person to do that. And that's why those companies, you know, one man shows sell for $20 million. I mean, it's just, it's amazing, but they're quasi geniuses to be able to pull that off. <laughs> what we yeah. try to do is just simplify to one thing. And if we can operate and add more products, now it's something that I can get my whole team behind and everybody is rowing in the same direction. How many different Shopify sites are you managing right now? Oh, only a handful, probably in any serious manner. three or four. I mean, really mostly they're glorified lead pages, um, for our, for our industrial, I'm sorry, for our contractor. So we'll sell, um, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, so I have one product that's called a flood sack. It's called flood sacks, S A X. And basically they're, they're sandless sandbags. They blow up with water and they can, they, they work like a big sandbag. So, um, you know, in a, in a hurricane or flood situation, they're really, really important. Um, mm -hmm. now we sell those primarily through the home depots, the Grangers, Amazon of the world. That's our main focus, but I also get institutional sales. And so I have a website so that if, um, you know, the city of New Orleans wants to contact me and buy thousands of these for a, you know, in a situation where I'm selling to the, to the red cross or something like that, they have a way of contacting me because maybe their, um, infrastructure isn't set up to buy a thousand on Amazon. And so yeah. it's really, it's really more for these bulk sales than that I'm using it as a particular marketing tool, but it also helps to have kind of a landing page. So if it's an unknown brand, rather than being limited to the A plus content, the, you know, six images, a video and the five, if it's a more complex cell, like an electric vehicle charger, mm. I have that other standalone site where they can get a lot more information versus having to make a buying decision of several thousand dollars based on five bullet points. And so of all the people you mentioned, you had about, I think you said you had about 12 or 13 people who are constantly pick and packing. You have your firewoman and you have your upload guy. Who's overseeing those websites? Who's overseeing like the marketing of those? Like, how are you getting the traffic to those sites? 
Well, um, in some cases we are um, the, so a lot of times we're distributing, right? And so we expect mm-hmm. the brand, the brand itself and the manufacturer to be driving traffic to a lot of that stuff. So again, when we simplify and we're outsourcing, mm-hmm. I outsource the sales to Amazon. Not only do we also the actual supply for, to the suppliers, but we're also outsourcing the brand promotion. So I'll say, I'll say this, creating a new brand and a new product is not our expertise. Have we done it? And have we sometimes done it successfully? Yes. But generally speaking, we're a lot better at taking existing brands and making them available for sale. I would put it this way. A company like, um, I don't sell any other products, so I'm just going to, but I, I'm, they're a Minnesota company where I'm at. So 3M. All right. 3M doesn't necessarily need help promoting their brand. People are familiar with 3M. They already have great products. The main thing that's maybe uh, struggling for them is they don't have a good way to close the sale. No one knows where to get um, to. I, I wanted to get a, a safety vest for, um, you know, an orange safety vest. I don't know what store to go to buy a 3M orange safety vest. I don't yeah. know, but I would, I would want to go on Amazon. And if they're not comfortable doing Amazon themselves, we would help them make it so that they can close the sale. So what we are is we are the sale closer. We are the, we are the shopping cart, add to cart guys where a lot of the other branding, although we can help with that and we can do it within the Amazon ecosystem, we really try to let the brands do it because, um, you know, we assume that they know their customers best. But, yeah. and, but I'll admit, the one thing I'll say, Andrew, is I, it's a place that we need improvement. I mean, we would like to do a lot better. We'd like to do promotion. I'm working on that now. So speaking of sites, I mean, I've just launched a new one, Power Midwest, where we're getting into the EV charger market. We're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to stock a bunch of these EV chargers because I think electric vehicles are going to be a huge thing sooner rather than later. Um, And what I'm I'm still in the learning phase of when I don't have millions of people visiting my website, like I do through Amazon um, and, you know, and a very trusted site, how do I convert that over? And so it's something that, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to use lessons we've learned on Amazon and, and, and try to make that happen. Um, uh, on our own site. So it's a learning curve for us. I was gonna say, cause I, I feel like that market might be something that you would need to have a relatively solid brand on. Whereas you had kind of mentioned that's not really your expertise. So how are you, how are you currently tackling that? I think what we're doing is this. So we are a reseller. We're still wholesaling, right? And so mm-hmm. we're again, uh, standing on the shoulders of our existing brands. So we have mm-hmm. great EV brands that have their own, what, uh, um, uh, prestige in the industry. So as a seller of those brands, it's sort of a, what a tacit, uh, endorsement. Um, but, but it's something we're working on too. So I spent, I, I, I just, uh, before this interview, I got off a call with a, a major contractor of these things. I, I spent this morning emailing 40 different electric vehicle. Uh, I mean, I'm doing it the old school way of kind of reaching out. And so I think the main thing what we'll do, um, that's, uh, it is, we will need to do some stuff from an e-commerce standpoint for discovery. And then we're going to probably parlay that up with um, some very targeted, um, because these are high dollar amounts, uh, yeah. we can do more targeted uh, advertising as well. So I plan on sending you know, a personal FedEx to the CEO of each one of these companies or the owner. And mm-hmm. with just a small one page thing, not asking for a sale, nothing like that. So we're going to spend the, you know, $20 to $5 to send a personal FedEx so that it gets opened and viewed to the owner. But then we're also going to have to do some discovery so that homeowners, things like that, that are looking for electric vehicle chargers know that they can come to us and we can create that. So it's, 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 it's something that we're, we're, we're taking on, um, you know, as, as we go and I'm learning because it's not only in this case, we are, I'm taking the leap to have a brand new product and a brand new company kind of pushed out there. And uh, uh, I guess we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, it's a great market to go into if you know how to do it. I mean, obviously, you have all of these different uh, EV, you know, ton of different brands out there. I, I think Rivian is now going public or something. And I know Tesla's obviously doing well. Um, and then, but you still have the other traditional, you know, auto uh, automakers like F 150s mm-hmm. are now like, or now the Lightning is now F 150 charger.com. So, oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, genius. Howard? I'm that's, is that make money on that domain alone? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. So, okay. So you, there, (laughs) you have so much. So, okay. So you have this massive, like, you know, huge product line that you're doing through Amazon. 
you have this 3PL company. Now you're doing um, uh, Power Midwest. So you're starting a new brand, basically. You have all this stuff going. What is what is your personal exit strategy if you don't? Some people don't like to get into it. You don't have to. But are you oh, planning yeah. on exiting one day? Or is it, I know you have kids. Or are you handing it down to the kids? Like, what's what's the goal? Honestly, so I've, for the longest time, I was trying to get out before I was 40 or work all the way through. I didn't want to get caught where at exit when I'm like 52 and maybe mm -hmm. I just don't have the energy to start over again. You know, yeah. um, I either want to get out relatively soon and be able to start the second half of my career. I've started to come along though, which is kind of sad is that um, I don't think I'll ever retire. I mean, realistically, I enjoy working. I can't imagine my version of heaven is to have a giant forest in front of me and then have be handed an ax. I mean, that's what I like to do. I, and when I'm not, I don't like sitting at the beach because my wife, she scolds me every time I don't relax. <laughs> I go and get up and I start doing stuff. And so I think it's a very possible, there's a very strong possibility that I just work till I'm 75. And what, what, what's nice is though, it's very free. If you actually aren't worried about an exit, you can do the right things all the time. I'm not worried about hitting certain financial metrics. I'm mm -hmm. worried about putting one foot in front of the other. And I'm not trying to create evaluation. It's very, very tricky in this current environment um, with everything going on with Amazon roll-up companies and things like that. Um, and I've spoken to many of them. My model is just, there's a few two moving, moving parts and we're not one brand. There's, it's great to be one brand because you're very segmentable. My business yeah. is not very segmentable. And so what's been tricky is I wouldn't get any value from it anyway, but it's very freeing to know that, Hey, no one's going to give me any value. So let's just keep doing great things. I think it's Elon Musk quote, right? That they said, he said, you know, basically do what makes you great. And if you keep doing what makes you great, everything will take care of itself. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do what makes us great. And at some point, hopefully we're big enough where, you know, every company is complicated. You know, once you get to a hundred million dollars in sales, every business is complicated. And so, yeah. you know, once we hit that figure on an annual basis, no one's going to care that we're complicated or not. You know, we're big enough where, you know, we're a serious player for, for any kind of major company. So what is it that makes you personally great? Like, what is it that you really enjoy doing that you know you're great at, that you work on all the time for your businesses? And then what is it that you hate doing that hopefully you've outsourced at this point sure. or that you are hoping to get rid of soon? So I'm a, I'm a schemer. Um, I mean, in the best possible way, uh, <laughs> basically I can, I can figure out the moving parts, mm -hmm. how to balance them, um, and figure out whether a, and make something work that should work. And so a lot of times if anybody who's done with Amazon, or I'm sure it's kind of, it's probably e-commerce, uh, in, in general, what you run into is there's all sorts of goofy rules. Um, you, you know, if, to get up, to get Amazon to, you know, they're constantly creating issues, whether it's new requirements or, or, or other uh, logistical issues, things like that. We know how to get around those and they're not in black hat ways. I don't do anything black hat or anything shady that way. It's just, we know how to give kind of a minimum viable product to get products up and get the problem solved and we keep moving on. And so um, we're, we do a pretty good job of making sure that we get the deliverable that we want. And if that means we want a 20 pound bag of salt to sell for eight 99 with free shipping prime, we will make sure that happens. And if we're able to do it, we're going to be rewarded for making that available on the marketplace. Um, as far as stuff I don't like to do, um, I, I think it's more of the, yeah, the malarkey around just uh, different, different stuff getting, taken down for silly reasons. I mean, I can mm -hmm. tell you that, you know, when you have 300,000 products and Amazon comes out with a new pesticide warning, anything that has mouse or bug or something like that in it. So, I mean, we got a bunch of stuff taken down that eventually put up, or sometimes we just abandon essentially because it wasn't worth the, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze because it was, you know, it had a bug screen on it, or it was a bug in reference to a, uh, you know, some electrical bug. Or something like that right and we just yeah. we just you know it's stuff like that that's just a giant distraction and mm -hmm. um you'll hear lots of amazon sellers talk about that but um you know essentially i'd love to get back into um 
uh, you know, more marketing, building brands. I do think there's a lot of value there and we've started pivoting that way a little bit. And I, I, that's, that'd be the thing that I'd want to mostly get into. But I also know that, you know, putting in the time to be a passion and a champion of products is not something that I have the patience for. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing that, you know, I, I, I don't do that. I'd, I'd like to be able to get better at. Yeah. I know not a lot of sellers like sharing their revenue, so you know, I'm not asking you to do that, but let's do trend line products. So the big one that you're mostly on Amazon for, have you broken, um, I assume you've broken eight figures correct. annually, correct? correct? What do you think is, is what helped you break that eight figure mark? And what is it? What would you, what advice basically would you give other sellers to break that mark? Cause I know a lot of sellers where that's, that's a big hurdle. I know it's kind of like the 1 million, the 5 million, but then that 10 always seems to be a big struggle. So what helped you kind of jump that? No, it is hard. I think, I think really the thing that a lot of sellers and I, and I understand why a lot of sellers, the ones that I, they, they have bigger selection. I think the simplest yeah. thing is to say, to go from 40 products to 200 products. And um, you know, if you're really, really good and you can sell millions of dollars within 40 products, so it's, you have 40 products that are each doing a hundred grand, you have the bandwidth to find a bunch of $20,000 products. You do. I mean, you've got, you know, it's not going to take that much of a, of a leap. It's, I mean, I should say, of course, caveat, 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 everybody's got their own production issues, the development issues, all that other stuff. Right. And you don't want to just do something to cannibalize, but I do think growing and adding SKUs is the main thing I would say too. Um, you might have to start all over again. And basically you, I mean, if you're at the point that you are selling millions of dollars uh, through e-commerce, whether it's through a Shopify site, Amazon, or what have you, mm -hmm. you, you are a, you are a giant as far as your knowledge about how to work in that, in those systems. And there's no reason that with, if you have the bandwidth that you can't basically replicate the vast majority of that with a different product. And so, you know, don't sell yourself short. It's definitely not your vitamins that got to $4 million. It's you being a just savage when it comes to being able to sell in those marketplaces. And, you know, whether you are selling uh, supplements or all of a sudden you're selling plush toys, like you'll be able to do the same thing to a certain extent, you know, granted that you get maybe granted that, you know, there's, there's bad luck and what have you in, in some of that. And the model has to make sense. But I, I think anybody who's looking to go there, they just have to ask themselves. I think they have to ask themselves is going from 5 million to 10 million. Is that worth working twice as hard and doing it all over again, yeah. twice. And, and, and for yeah. a lot of people that maybe doesn't make sense. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like because of that mindset, the 80, 20 doesn't, the 80, 20 rule doesn't really apply in your business. Am I correct? Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, we are, we are, we have a very, very long tail. Um, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, I sell thousands of different products each week and I think that's, to our benefit. I mean, people worry about, you know, I sell, um, say only one, let's say Amazon's my primary customer. Well, I have one big customer, right? And that's very, very scary to some people, but in reality it's a Amazon B, yeah. even if I were to lose some relationship with Amazon somehow, I still have access and I have great buying power with all these different suppliers. And so I can go to the, whatever the next marketplace is, or there's different ways that I can still recover and recoup some of that revenue, which is I prefer doing with Amazon. Um, there's some specific nuances of selling directly to Amazon, which are hidden and underratedly amazing. Um, and then uh, what, what I'd say too is I have, not, I have one customer, but I sell them thousands of different products in many, many different categories. I'm diversified, maybe not in my customer base, but in my product base. So I'm, yes, maybe someone has um, 10 different customers, but they only have 20 products. So if one product gets axed or, or uh, ingredient gets banned or some goofy thing like that, you know, they've lost 120 F where if I lose one product, I mean, I, I literally, I don't even read the email all the way. I mean, it's just done. We move on. Hmm. Okay. So as we kind of come to an end here, I have to make sure that I, I give you your moment and <laughs> let sure. you kind of give us like a little bit of insight into, so Churlon services, why, why should someone work with you? Like what's, what's the, 
perfect ideal seller for you to be sure. working with there? So the perfect um, company is looking for, um, they're looking for some handholding Amazon expertise when they're selling or Amazon specific, but any kind of e-commerce. So we can make kind of fulfillment um, just to be clear, but basically they're looking for uh, handholding, handheld fulfillment. They're looking for uh, not just a company that just blindly pick packs and chips, but can help provide some guidance. And then usually is look is a little more, more Amazon focused as far as e-commerce and that mm -hmm. might include vendor central. And so I think our biggest, biggest differentiator is beside, like I talked about big products, things like that is really that if they want to continue selling directly to Amazon, but they don't want to manage shipping directly to Amazon, which is uh, without going into details, it's a major pain and you have to reroute all your um, normal shipping processes to be able to do it. We can handle that for you. And so if you want to have, if you want to have a direct Amazon relationship without actually having to directly deal with them, we can be really helpful with that. Beautiful. Of course, really appreciate having you on the show, Andrew. It was awesome. I, that Absolutely. was great. Your, your operational skills are mind blowing. So this was totally worth it. Really appreciate it. Big thank you to everyone who tuned in. Of course, head over to ecomshow.com. Make sure you subscribe on any of the podcast platforms or YouTube or anywhere else you want to. Um, but until next time, keep selling and good luck out there. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker a full-service digital marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of The Ecom Show.